<laughs> my godfather, who's off, off, been very successful, he just said to me, the only bit of advice I give you, he said, is get to f you money as soon as possible. There you go. And I said, what do you mean? He went, to the extent where you have enough money where you can tell anybody f you exactly. and walk away. Yeah. So someone in a job that you've got is giving you a hard time or whatever, and I've actually acted on this. Right. Um, you can just literally walk away because you, you're not reliant on that thing or that person. Sure for money to buy food in the morning. Well, there's money, and then there's Elon Musk. Right. He literally says yes. to people. To right. the people who he needs <laughs> to give money to X. It's like, you, right? Yeah. That's the real definition of That money. is. But I agree. But listen, let me, just, getting back to what you said, right? Pe the mistake people make mm. when they invest, because you're right, you have to have fun. And that's and specifically, I say, you should speculate. And I go through how to speculate carefully, have fun, make money. But the bottom line is, if you think that you can take your money that you, that you save mm. and speculate, you're going to end up OK. You're not. You're mm. going to mostly get destroyed, because this, the playing field is dramatically tipped against you. When you go to a casino, right, mm. and you walk into a casino, the odds are stacked against you, right? So over time, you're going to lose. You might win once in a while, but over time, you lose. But you might be, some people enjoy going, even if they lose money. But it gets worse, though, because this is not just a casino, Wall Street. Mm. It's a corrupt casino, where the dice are stacked, are loaded, mm. the cards are being dealt from the bottom of the deck, so it's not a fair playing field. So it's a double whammy. It's the odds are against you naturally, and then it's also stacked against you because it's corrupt. There's corruption there, there's, and there's things that are legal, like short-term, high-frequency trading. There's inside information all over the place. There's just you know, better deals given to the bigger investors. So the answer is you extract the value by investing in the S&P 500. And by the way, they're constantly changing out companies, so you always have the best companies. And then you still have the fun by taking some money that you have and go do whatever you want. You want to go and buy and sell crypto and tokens or NFTs or short -term Do you believe in Bitcoin? Yes, I do believe in Bitcoin. So I saw Jamie Dimon saying he just thinks it's all hot air. I know, so I respectfully just, I, I once thought that too, okay? I did, but again, when you look at something like Bitcoin, it's, it's like one of those things where it truly the lie can become the truth if enough people say it's true. But isn't it, isn't it a case of if there's enough mugs out there, they'll all trade it with each other and it'll go up? Well, well, yes, but over. But you have some really smart mugs these days. Mm. You know, you have some of the you know, most sophisticated people starting to embrace it. So I think most of crypto is complete bullshit. Well, Currency, I can understand, you know, and, and Jamie Dimon was saying that, that you can use cryptocurrency in a perfectly legitimate way and it's very useful. Yeah. The actual system. But blockchain, the underlying technology. The blockchain yeah. technology, uh, yeah. yeah. That, 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 that technology is very useful and is widely used. Right. His argument was more about the kind of Bitcoin stuff, which just seems to be based on a sack of sand. Well, on some level that's true, but you can make the same case for fiat currencies where they're printing dollars and just printing more dollars at any time they see fit. But one thing about Bitcoin is there's a finite amount of Bitcoin. And I would agree in the early days, yes, it was mostly used for fraud and scamming and evading. It's not the case anymore. There's a lot of really sophisticated people who are buying Bitcoin now that it's has there's EFTs, you know, mm. it's 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 completely it's uh, you know um, it's uh, ETFs, but it's it's completely changed now. So I think Bitcoin is legit, but the problem is, is all these other coins mm. and cryptos that are worthless, and they really been they're like the penny stocks of mm. crypto, mm. and they're basically been issued by people that want to separate others from their money, and those should be avoided. You mentioned penny stocks. It was that that led you down the wrong path, wasn't it? Yes. That stuff early on. And it ended up with you losing your liberty. What was the worst moment for you when it all went wrong? When you look back, what was the moment you would least want to relive? When I was asked to wear a wire, and I did, and it was a friend, and I... Seen me see in the film. And I slipped him a note, because I didn't want to rap. I, yeah. I thought I was being a stand-up guy. Yeah, so that's in the movie. Right, it's true. And I thought I was doing the right thing as, you know, a man, and I slipped the guy a note saying, don't incriminate yourself, mm. right? And I walked away from that saying, you know what, I maintain my integrity because I'm not a rat. And then three months later, they came back to me, and the guy ratted me out. And at that moment in time, like, literally, I lost all faith in humanity. Mm. And I was facing... 20 years in jail, they could have broken my agreement. If it was not for the FBI agent who indicted me, he was a great guy, he understood and, like, they gave me a second chance because that could have destroyed my life. That was the low point for sure. That moment when I, you, know, you think, like, I'm not a rat, and then you... It's, so that's the Jonah Hill character. 
But that's not true. It wasn't. The, but in, in reality, it was not the Joe right. Hill character. It was they collapsed like three or four people into that character, right? It was someone else. Did I, you ever have anything more to do with the one that ratted you out? You know, I saw him a few times, but no relation. Any forgiveness? It, it, yeah, of course I forgive. I don't, I'm not one to hold grudges, and I forgive, you know, and, uh, you know, you don't forget, but you certainly can But that forgive. was worse for you than actually going to prison? Far worse than prison itself was waiting to go to prison. The thought of it? Just the uncertainty in your life. You're almost dying in slow motion. You know, once you go to prison, you know, it becomes almost a rebirth if you're willing to take that failure, that life failure, and use it as a lesson to reinvent mm. yourself, and, and that's what I did. I mean, you have a lot of time in prison to think about stuff. There's nothing else to do for most of the day, right? Yeah, so I did really two things. I, number one is I, I, I thought about stuff a lot, for mm. sure, but I also taught myself to write. Mm. And I used that time to perfect my writing. So it was all not perfect, but just, you know, really become a, a competent writer. And that led me to write The Wolf of Wall Street, mm. which then launched this entirely new career. So I think the matter, you know, the lesson for anyone listening is that, you know, everyone f up. Everyone makes mistakes. Sure. Some people make much bigger mistakes than others, right? Would you change anything? No. I mean, when you look at where you've got to now... No, I wouldn't. The I would... whole path, yeah. up and down, and then back up, would you change it? I wouldn't, but that... that so, let me... It's a complicated question. So, the answer is no, because it's not possible. Of course, if I could not have done anything to hurt another person, of course I wish I never did that. Of course I feel terrible about all that stuff, and I'm very remorseful for that, OK? And, I, and, and I've spent so many years making up for that in countless ways. But I wouldn't change anything, because that was my life. And it happened, mm. and I've used that as sort of like to create this life I have now. So if I could cherry pick it and say, you know, I hope no one ever lost money as my, of course I do that. I'm not crazy, right? But you can't do that. Mm. You know, you have to look back at your life and say, you know what, this is what I did. I made mistakes. I learned from those mistakes, and now I keep becoming a better version of myself. That's my goal: is to become a better version of myself every day. Are you completely squeaky clean now? Squeaky, I mean sober, clean, or clean with the law? Anyway. Squeak, I'm the cleanest person that you'll ever meet. You know why? <laughs> because I, I would have to be. In other words, you know, you realize that I'm going to be scrutinized more than anybody. And in fact, I was. For many years, the government thought I was not paying my fine that I had. They thought I was hiding money. They looked at my asshole with a freaking microscope, right? And you know what they found after five years? Zero. Mm. So like Warren Buffett says, you could follow anybody. If a cop follows you for 300 miles, they'll give you a speeding ticket. They couldn't give me one, and they found me for, for hundreds of miles. Before you went into prison, you obviously had beautiful yachts and private planes and all that kind of thing. Which of those things do you still have? Well, I have beautiful... I, I fly private often, right? On your own plane? I, no, I, I charter a yeah. plane, which is getting prohibitively expensive, by the way, <laughs> which is terrible. You know, that's what I love. The Trump come back and lower prices for gas would be a really good thing. We'll come to him. Yeah, um, I'm a fan. You know, not of all things, but generally yeah. speaking, big fan, right? Um, um, I would never buy a yacht again. I was so happy when the one I had sank. It was like the great. I was so happy. Like I didn't plan it out, but when it was sick, I was like, yes, Lloyd's of London. You know, <laughs> right? I worked at Lloyd's. Right. My like, first year of my working yeah. career, I had to help a mate out. I worked as on one of the underwriting syndicates. Yeah. So I would have been one of those guys. Paying you all that money for your yacht. As there it you go, down. right? I got a check for like $9 million a day. It said a few days later, they showed up. They're like, usually we investigate these things, but you know what? No one will be stupid enough to go on the boat themselves into a storm. Like, mm. you just, here's a check and don't ever ask us to insure you again, basically. And they pay <laughs> me right away, right?